All right, just as a quick follow up to that uh, <clears throat> that last video, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that I was understanding what was happening with the render visibility. I honestly don't ever use this. Um, uh, I just I, I find that you kind of build your scene and everything's contributing the way it's supposed to if it's shaded properly and lit properly, and then um, uh, you know I break everything out as render layers um, or AOVs. Uh, better stated that way I can have control in the comp to make some of these adjustments instead of trying to fake things and have things not you know be physically accurate <clears throat> so um, I'm going to come into this sphere here and I'm going to quickly just take this and let's let's push up this particular sphere's brightness up a little bit and uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll put a little color and make it a pink sphere and we're going to come back out to our object level now, looking at this, I'm going to uh, put this back to visible to all rays. Um, I'm going to stop and restart my render real quick, make sure that everything's rendering properly. And one of the things I did was I went on to the ROP while that's kicking off. Um, and uh, I made sure that I actually had an extra diffuse bounce. That way I was getting that diffuse um, kicking off of things, you know, so we can see that here, here's with one diffuse, here's with it set to zero, and obviously there's a big difference there. So we want that extra little bounce. Uh, one is usually enough. If we go to two, we'll see that there's very little difference uh, between two and one for just more render time. So uh, we'll keep it at one uh, for the amount of secondary bounce that we want um, on the diffuse. Go back out to my object level now, and now we can kind of play with these two uh, different object or these three different objects and what their render visibility is set to right now all of them are set to um, everything so they're just kind of the default oops I didn't want to do that. and I'm going to take my sphere now and I'm just going to tell it to be visible only to primary rays right let's snapshot this this will be our kind of our our uh, witness let's snap it again and I'm going to go to my render visibility and say only primary rays okay so now we see in looking at these two things that I've lost my shadow on my sphere onto the uh, the grid. I don't see it reflecting in the sphere, the gray sphere anymore, right? It's it's secondary diffuse is not contribute uh, contributing, uh, and neither is uh, its reflection. And so we see that uh, you know uh, it looks lit properly, but it's not casting any any shadow. You know, if we take this sphere. And uh, we just push it back in, uh, let's push it back in Z just a little bit. Um, we'll go negative point one. There we go. And uh, we can see that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop and restart this. Sometimes I find that um, IPR, as great as it is, um, will sometimes leave me with strange results uh, as I'm changing things and I wanna make sure that I got, like if I'm, if I'm ever in doubt, I always go ahead and stop and restart the render, right? Because you see there was a change there. It got goofed uh, when I moved that um, sphere. So, um, you know, here's the the light of the shadow of that sphere is actually moving behind this. Um, and so now we're going to go back to this sphere and let's just put it back at visible to all. And we should see that kind of be how we expect. And I'll take a new snapshot since I moved that. That gives us our kind of our, uh, our ensuring that we have uh, um, our base to come back to. And so we saw that, you know, turning off that primary visibility or, or setting it to only primary rays, you know, got rid of some of that. So now we're going to say visible to primary and shadow rays. And so if we see this now, um, the shadow from the sphere onto it, it now shadows properly in the scene. And, uh, but it's reflections, it's diffuse contribution have been removed. It's just the primary first ray that casts into the scene along with its shadows, which is helpful, right? So maybe that's what you want. Uh, phantom is phantom, right? This is the same thing as making something phantom uh, on the ROP. Uh, you know, it, its shadow is there, its reflections are there, its secondary rays are there, and it's contributing to the scene. So now we're going to do invisible to diffuse rays. And now if we look at this, we can see that the that second diffuse bounce is actually what's going away, right? So we're, we're losing that second diffuse bounce uh, between those two. But we still have our reflection, right, of that, which is not the, the lighting contribution of that into the scene. 
uh, the secondary bounds of diffuse. So now we're going to say invisible to secondary rays. Okay. And we can see that our secondary diffuse is gone. Our secondary reflections are also gone. And so now that's the, the main difference between those. So, uh, and then invisible means don't render it at all. So I hope this helps. It's a little bit of clarification. I know I released that other video. And uh, I, again, like I don't play with that, so I don't use it very often. Uh, and so it just took a little bit of a better test scenario to be able to see the differences between those, those different settings. So along those lines, you can use uh, reflection masks um, to do some, some of these similar things. Uh, so if we came in here and um, like on the sphere, our reflection mask, we could say uh, we don't want it to reflect everything. We just want it to reflect uh, itself and we want to reflect the ground, our grid and say accept pattern. And we'll see that now we still have everything that's reflecting properly, but that has now been removed, that object, uh, because we've removed it as a reflection mask. And so that's going to both remove its diffuse uh, reflection property as well as its let's let's restart that just to make sure I would have only expected its reflections to go away but it's secondary diffuse to continue to contribute uh, but it is not so let's let's see okay well that appears to be its desired behavior so we're losing um, any reflected light whether that's diffuse or specular um, uh, you know, that, that is a true re reflection removal. So, and then we have light masks that we can exclude certain lights, right? So if we want, um, you know, uh, for example, in sphere two, light mask, we're gonna go ahead and just click this off and say, accept pattern. So we've removed everything. And now we see that the direct light of that light mask has been removed. But interestingly enough, we're still re receiving our indirect um, uh, secondary, uh, both reflection, uh, diffuse and uh, scattered light. So those are a couple of different ways to do the same thing uh, using uh, masking, uh, using render visibility flags uh, to be able to set some of the contributions in your scene.